Hey, good evening, guys. How are you doing? Good evening. Hi, good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, guys. How are you today? How was I your day? Good. Excellent, Byron. Fine, teacher. Very Thank good. Fine. Excellent. I'm glad to hear that you are having a good Monday. And remember that we have class only today, right? Hoy sí, desde mañana ya, pues, eh, quedamos en pausa hasta la, el siguiente lunes, ¿verdad? Así de que, guys, thank you very much for, you know, um, for the effort, right? And for, for being here. Así que eh, today we're going to be working with um, the information that we began last week. Last week we began with um, section number three. Good evening, Diana. Good evening. And we're going to continue today with um, with the rest, you know, of the of the material. Okay. Eh, bueno, la idea para hoy, o al menos lo que yo quería que que, que trajera, eran ejemplos. Do you remember examples mm -hmm. of the previous structure that we studied? Okay. Let's see if you if you um brought you know information. Is in up pues don't worry, we're going to uh see here, right? Um we are going to study past modules, right? Of I mean for opinions and advice. Okay, vamos a hacer, vamos a tratar de avanzar en lo que podamos, pero siempre tomando en cuenta que la parte más y extremadamente eh, especial, ¿verdad? Es que ustedes pues vayan comprendiendo el tema y no solo eso, sino que también ustedes vayan armando sus propios ejemplos, ¿verdad? Así que here is where we stopped last week, right? Eh, past models for degrees of certainty, right? Here is where we stopped. And I was saying that uh, we are going to check, right, the different structures and we're going to try to put them into practice. ¿verdad? But we will see what happens, okay? We will see what happens. Now, this is what we studied last Friday, creo yo. Y me acuerdo que les di ejemplos, right? And, and I gave you um, information on how to how to make things, etc. Right. Entonces, what is the structure that we studied? Is this structure, verdad? We studied three things, estudiamos tres cosas, and the first one is, it's almost certain, verdad? Que decíamos que es cuando, pues, prácticamente, eh, eh, estamos seguros, verdad? De que, de que sí es lo que, hey, ahí está funcionando la cámara. Good, okay. So we said that it's when when it is, um, we are very sure. Estamos super seguros de lo que estamos diciendo. She must have left already, right? Must have, okay? Well, kind of an interpretation in Spanish would be something like, ella eh, ya debió haberse ido, o debió haberse ido, ¿verdad? Why do you say that? Porque dice es eso, ah, because she's very punctual, eh? bien puntual para, para venir y para irse, right? So um, those are things that are 100, when we are 100% sure, right? Eh, luego, en esta estructura dijimos que vamos a tener la siguiente fórmula. Must, ¿verdad? Uh, must have plus past participle. Past participle, ¿ok? Luego, eh, La segunda que vimos fue esta. It's not possible. ¿Verdad? It's not possible. No, teacher. Mm -mm. ¿Por qué dice eso? Porque yo sé lo que estoy diciendo. ¿verdad? She couldn't have been at home. No. Why do you say that? ¿Por qué dices eso? Ah, porque si hubiese estado ahí, ella me, 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 me habría llamado, me habría avisado, etc. She couldn't have been at home. ¿Cuál es la estructura que tengo acá? Va a ser couldn't, ¿verdad? Couldn't, eh, couldn't have más past participle, ¿ok? Past, ay Dios, past participle. Y la última que vimos el viernes es esta, ¿verdad? Que decíamos, it's possible, right? It's possible, una probabilidad bastante grande de, lo que, de que lo que yo estoy diciendo es cierto. ¿Por qué? No, porque no... No estoy seguro, sino que sé 
que puede ser una probabilidad. She may or might have forgotten, or she may or may not have, have uh, remembered, or could have broken down. Now, acá, como en la primera, también tienen la parte negativa, ¿ok? Por ejemplo, aquí yo puedo decir uh, must not have, si es negativa. Same happens here. Lo mismo me va a pasar acá, ¿verdad? Vamos a ocupar ese espacio acá. It may or may have. May or might have. I'm sorry. May or oh. might. Hi. May or might, ¿verdad? Eh, uy, falta la G H aquí. May or might have más un pasado participio. Si la queremos hacer negativa, entonces may, oops, perdón. May or might have. Not. ¿Verdad? Aquí not, antes de have, más un pasado participio. O simple y sencillamente puedo usar could have. Could have más un past participio. Vale, eso fue lo que vimos la semana este, pasada, ¿okay? el día viernes. Entonces, esto que ustedes ven en pantalla, chicos, son las fórmulas. Son como los elementos que ustedes necesitan para construir sus, este, sus ejemplos. I'm going to share them with you through WhatsApp. Sorry, chicos, no había visto los mensajes que habían mandado hasta ahorita. Permítame, chicos. Bye. Ok. Entonces, ahora que ya tenemos, ¿verdad? La, lo, ya no sabemos los elementos que necesitamos para armar nuestras sentences. You are going to create your own examples. Ok. So, let's go ahead and create. Puede ser uno de cada uno. Okay, so you can use one with uh, must have plus plus participle, o la puede ser negativa, must not have, ¿verdad? Plus plus participle. Eh, puede usar couldn't have plus plus participle, o cualquiera de estos de que están aquí abajo. So please, everyone, let's go ahead and create three examples. Vamos a crear tres ejemplos usando estos elementos y lo, las, los que tenemos acá. Look, esos de acá, okay? So here we have, and also I'm going to share, yo sé que ya los tienen, ¿verdad? Pero in case you need them. También eso se lo voy a dejar acá. There you go. Entonces, let's go ahead and give five minutes. Van a tener cinco minutos para crear sus propios ejemplos. Y en todo ese momento voy a pasar asistencia. Ok, uh, aquí está, five minutes, ok. Your five minutes begin right now. Ahí está. I'm going to pass the attendance in the meantime.
orquesta. Ok, Ana Cecilia Rodríguez de Pérez. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Cecilia Romero de Domínguez. Present teacher. Gracias. Byron Rafael Avelar Aquino. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Fernando Portillo Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you very much. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Eh, Carlos Roberto Domínguez, ¿no está? Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amador. Eh, Damaris Merari Marroquín Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you. Daisy Magdalena Hernández Hernández. Present teacher. Gracias. Elizabeth del Carmen Mejía Torres. Present teacher. Thank you. Elmer Mauricio Salas Rojas. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Eduardo Morán Rodríguez. Present. Thank you. Eh, Ma Madeline Dayana Cerón de Paz. Present teacher. Thank you. María Griselda de la Paz Abora. María Griselda. Eh, Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespín. Eh, Rufino Amílcar Hernández Linares. Present. Gracias. Sandra Janes Vázquez Cortés. I'm here, teacher. Thank you very much. Eh, Saúl Arnulfo Mengíbar Crespín. Eh, Sa ok, gracias, Saúl. Eh, Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio. Wendy Carolina. Alguien que haya ingresado en este momento y no alcanzó a escuchar su nombre en la asistencia. No, vaya, perfecto. Ok, entonces continuamos, chicos. Ya falta un minuto. Me avisan cuando estén listos, please. So we are going to start checking your, your answers. Vaya, chicos, are you ready? ¿Estamos listos? Vaya. Ok, let's begin with the first ones, ok? So, can you give me examples using must have and or must not have? Plus, plus, participle, guys. Ningún ejemplo, chicos. A ver, Madeline, dígame. She must 
not have mm -hmm. arrived late. Okay, she must, oops, must not have uh, arrived, arrived late. Very good. Okay, she must not have arrived late. Uh, is an area well? Let's say that it's my daughter and um, I'm worried because she hasn't, you know, told me if she arrived to a very important meeting, but knowing her, right? And since there was no traffic, she must not have arrived late. No pudo haber llegado tarde, right? So very good. What about another example? More examples with must have. Uh -huh. eh, Ana Cecilia, diga. Sí, teacher. Eh, number one, most, how, rest, yesterday. Most have? Most have rested. O sea, como cansa descansado. Pero quién? Descansado. descansado. ¿Quién? Who? Eh, sería ella, entonces sería she, she si, si se quiere, puede ser he, she, it, María, José, etc. Uh -huh. ¿Ah? Entonces, digamos, este, Ernesto, entonces sería Ernesto Mott uh -huh. How. Ok. Uh -huh. Mott How Rested Yesterday. Ok. Ernesto Mott Have Rested Yesterday. Ok. okay. Very good. Y, eh, number... Tú uh -huh. sería este, she, fall, have, esto que no sé cómo se pronuncia, gotten sick, gotten sick, uh -huh. este, como que estuvo, podría estar enfermo. Podría o no, o, o no pudo haber, no, es que se pudo haber estado. Pudo o... haber estado enfermo. Ah, ok, entonces es la última, ¿verdad? Good Ajá, have, sí. ok, Por... aquí. Ajá. He could, he could have how? gotten sick, you said, right? Uh, got, uh, es, esa, got, ¿cómo se pronuncia, teacher? Got, gotten. Gotten. Got, you can say gotten or gotten. Both options sure. are, are correct. 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 Mm -hmm. No. Yes. Uh, but, uh -huh. Gotten. Gotten. Correct. Gotten or gotten. Como usted lo decía también, estaba correcto. Gotten uh, or gotten. Las dos opciones están correctas. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Only. Así que, don't worry. No se preocupe que sí lo estaba diciendo bien. Ok. Así, Only, okay? teacher. Very good. He could have gotten sick. Like, for instance, digamos, ¿verdad? I have a classmate. O tengo, digamos, un, un compañero de trabajo y, y yo digo, no vino. Pero qué raro, si nunca falta. Yo digo, ah, he could have gotten sick debió haberse enfermado porque es la única razón por la que él este, eh, falta. Entonces ahí cabe el escenario de it's possible. ¿verdad? Byron, what about you? He could have broken his arm. Ok, he could have broken his arm. Ok, muy bien. He could have broken his arm. And I must have had an emergency. I or, he, or someone else? I. Pero si digo I, estoy hablando de mí. Y si yo digo... Ah, entonces, he, him or she, or she. Vaya, solo, solo ahí. Vaya. Si yo digo he must have, he must, oh, perdón, he must have had, ¿verdad? Had an emergency. An emergency. Emergency. Yes. Emergency, ok. Muy bien. Si yo digo, I must have had an emergency, es como si yo no supiera en realidad lo que hubiera pasado. Si fuese el caso, que estoy hablando de mí, entonces digo, I had an emergency, ¿verdad? Yo tuve una emergencia. Dígame, Elizabeth del Carmen. Good evening. Uh, the first sentence is... Uh -huh. She must have awoken early this morning. Uh -huh. She must have awakened uh, early, right? Early this morning. Okay. Yes. Very good. Sí, verdad. De repente, digamos, nos levantamos y no encontramos a, 
a nuestra mamá, ¿verdad? De repente, qué raro, se levanta y no está. Hmm. She must have uh, awakened early or she must have gotten up early, right? This morning, hasta que se haya fue al mercado, right? Entonces, she must have awakened early this morning. It's almost certain. Estoy súper segura, ¿por qué? Porque es la única razón por la que suele haber estado temprano o tenía cita con el, con el doctor, ¿verdad? She must mm -hmm. have awakened early this morning because she had an appointment. I don't know, ¿verdad? Saúl Arnulfo, what about you? Yes, I have an example. In the first one, it could be she must have spent a lot of money in the party yesterday. <laughs> she must have spent a lot of money in the party uh, yesterday. Okay, a lot of details, right? She must, <laughs> oops, sorry, she must, I guess that, she must have spent a lot of money in the party yesterday, right? Yeah, because actually there are people that, you know, go, um, go to celebrations, etc., and then they go to the after party, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Ah, ok, tell me. Y no le pregunté okay. a Elizabeth si usted tenía más. Ya voy con usted otra vez. Oye, ya voy. Veamos, dígame, eh, Saúl. Ok. Um, she could have... No, ok. I could have worked in, in, okay, on building my house, but I was busy. Okay, I could have worked in the house mm -hmm. construction. Yeah. Okay, in the house construction, but I was busy, right? I was busy, yeah. But I was busy. Very good, okay. So I could have worked, I'm sorry, worked. Really Thank you. I could have worked in the house construction, but I was busy. Very good. Thank you very much. Do you have another example? No, it's all. No. Thank you. Now, thank you. What about you, Elizabeth? Thank you. <laughs> thank you, teacher. The second one uh, is he couldn't have beaten his brother. Okay, very good. He couldn't, oops, couldn't have beaten his brother, right? Very yes. good. And the third? Mm hmm he might have given his umbrella. He might have given his umbrella. Umbrella. Okay. He must have given away, ¿verdad? ¿La debe regalado? ¿Así? Yes. Okay. He must have given away. Give away es regalar. Given away his umbrella. ¿Y qué le pasó, verdad? De repente estamos allí con los compañeros de oficina y vemos que hay un fulanito que siempre anda sombría, pues y hoy se está mojando porque no tiene y uno se queda, hmm, qué raro. He might have given away his umbrella. That's the reason why he's getting wet, right? Uh, and also, right, as you can see, well, this one, he couldn't have beaten his brother, ¿verdad? Eh, encontramos pues al hermano de esta persona golpeado y dice, pero eso solo estuvo con el hermano, pero no, pero he, he couldn't have beaten his brother. ¿Por qué? Because they love each other. Se quieren mucho and, and that wouldn't be possible, right? Ok, eh, more examples, guys, more examples. Ya vieron que son súper fáciles, ok. Y pues la traducción eh, o la interpretación en español es súper sencilla también, ¿verdad? Debió haber, ¿verdad? Could have been beaten. No, él no pudo haber sido golpeado, ¿verdad? O que no, no pudo haber golpeado, ¿verdad? A su hermano. Entonces, prácticamente es parecido a como la, en la forma en la que lo decimos en español. ¿Ok? So, do you have more examples? Examples about this one? No? Ok. Entonces, I'm going to share with you the ones that you have prepared. ¿Verdad? Le voy a ir pasando una por una para que vean ustedes que lo hicieron súper bien. She must have arrived tonight. A ver si no tengo typos. Do you know what a typo is? ¿Saben ustedes qué es un typo? ¿No? Un typo es un error al digitar o al, o al textear. Un typo. Que si me fue una letra o me hace falta una letra. ¿verdad? Ya se lo voy a poner a escribir ahí. Eh, creo que no hay typos. <laughs> Ahí está. It's typo, like this. Ok. Typo. Esto es un, un typo. Es un error al digitar o al, di o al textear. ¿Verdad? Typo. 
Veamos, typo meaning. Aquí está. Generalmente, pues, pasa al, 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 al digitar algo en una computadora, en una máquina de escribir, pero también se, se acondiciona a los textos, a los mensajes de texto también. Very good. So, questions, guys. Preguntas, chicos. Questions about this. ¿Cómo sienten que está? ¿Está fácil? ¿Está difícil? What do you think? It's interesting. Very good, very good attitude. They are very interesting. ¿Y saben por qué? Porque son frases que ya le agregan pues un poquito de, eh, por decirlo así, nos colocan ya no en un nivel básico, sino ya en un nivel pues que ya va, vaya va siendo un poco más intermedio, ¿verdad? Al expresarnos y usar este tipo de estructuras, ¿ok? Entonces, um, if you don't have more questions, let me ask you this. What about the platform, guys? Uh, did you complete the platform? In my case, no. I only have session one and two. One and two. Okay, very good. Just try to begin with number three, ¿verdad? Eh, tratemos de yeah. comenzar number three cuando podamos. Recordemos This que... Evening, Excellent. I'm eh, going to complete session uh, three and four. Section three and four. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Eh, ahorita, pues, lo importante es sección tres y el midterm exam, chicos, pero si ustedes pueden avanzar en más, excelente. Now, let me ask you guys, um, do you have questions about any exercise in particular with the platform? An exercise that was difficult or an exercise that you think, hmm, me equivoqué, no me, no, no me aparece la respuesta correcta. Hi, Rufino, dígame. I the um, platform is a mistake in section three point eleven. Uh, is the the article that the article is mistake? Okay, very uh, good. Let me see the, three point eleven, right? Section three point eleven. Very good. Bear with me. I'm going to. Go there. The reading section. The the, uh, yes, the article is is mistake. Uh, uh, the town Silver Cliff and uh, not no say uh, in the doesn't say. I I went I I went to manual. I went to see manual. Manual uh -huh. is in this manual. Yes, I here uh, he, I start. He, uh, it is it is article correct in the manual. And what's the name of but the article in the manual? In the manual. Uh -huh. What is the name of the article here in the manual? Uh, uh page ninety ninety one. Page, page. ninety one. This one, the blue lights of Silvercliff. Yeah, I, I, I thought, yes. Oh, okay. This is the correct yeah. article. Yeah, okay. Yes, it is true. I, I had the same uh, mistakes on the platform. Ah, okay. I'm so sorry, guys, that you went through um, this situation, right? But don't worry. Actually, um. Lo bueno es que no hay problema si ustedes pues cometieron algún alguna falla ahí porque no se las toma así, ¿verdad? Si quieren hagámoslo juntos. Let's go ahead and read. Ok, vamos a I leer. Can, I can use a team marine. <laughs> Because no. I, I don't Me too. I don't <laughs> <laughs> High <Yeah>. five. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. No, pero igual lo pueden volver a hacer, no hay ningún problema. Las, la, los ejercicios de la plataforma, usted los puede repetir las veces que sean necesarias. Así que puede, podemos leer y pueden ingresar, chicos, y de un solo aprovechan y haces, hacen ese ejercicio, ¿verdad? So the blue lights of Silver Cliff. It says, look at the picture. What do you think the blue lights are? Look, guys. Take a look at the picture. I'm going to make it bigger. Okay, lo voy a hacer más grande. So look at the picture. What do you think? What do you think the blue lights are? Like a spirit. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Like uh -huh. spirit. Like 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 spirits, right? 
look and and we have three people over here and they look scared right and you see like three lights over here bluish lights okay light like spirits as you said guys uh -huh. okay very good so now let's go ahead and read okay so can i have some volunteers to read and then i'm going to i'm um, going to correct voy a ir corrigiendo pronunciación eh, madre indayana please eh, le voy a ir marcando en azul lo que van a ir leyendo okay bear with me de mi momentito please acá eh, first uh, paragraph today the town of silver cliff colorado has a population of online 100 people once, however, it was a proposed meaning. Town where thousands came with dream of finding silver and making their fortune. Very good. Okay, so here only, right? Only and prosperous, right? Prosperous. prosperous. Very good. Okay, now let's move on to the second article. Okay, the second part, I'm sorry, the second paragraph. Volunteer for the second paragraph. It's this one, okay? Volunteer. Bueno, pues andan de tímido soy. Volunteer for number two. A ver, Byron, tell me. <laughs> Late one night in, mm -hmm. a, in 1818. I'm going to pause you there. A group a, of men. Lo voy a detener ahí. Numbers like this, you oh. can divide it in two. Se dividen en dos, right? So you okay. can say it again. Uh -huh. 1880. Mm -hmm. A group of miners were headed back to their camp after a good time in town. They were still loading and joking as they approached it. Mm -hmm. Approached. The grave approach the graveyard on a hill outside silver cliff then one of the men led and pointed toward the graveyard the others filled silence on top of each grave they saw flame like blue lights this ear like seemed to be dancing on the graves disappearing and then appreciating again okay thank you very much laughing right these were over here just laughing laughing laugh, laughing very good okay. laughing okay. excellent so what about the next one eh, um rufino so voy a subir un poquito acá bear with me y lo voy a marcar just give me one moment it is this one okay Go ahead. This was the first thing thing of the blue light of Silver Cliff. There have been many other sixteen sightings over sightings mm -hmm. sightings over the years. Mm -hmm. In one one thousand night night nine hundred sixty nine. I know it. Y lo, recordemos que las fechas o los años son en parte, se parten en dos. Ok, 1969. Edward Lingham from National Geographic Magazine visited, visited the Gravy Yards. Lingham's article tells of his experience. I saw them then Wrong spots of blue white light glowed in uh, eternally among the graves. I stepped forward, forward, for, forward, forward, forward for a better look. They vanished. I aimed my my flies like at one city glove and switched it on. I relieved it only on thumbstone. 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 Very good. Excellent. Over here, sighting, right? Sight is vista, el sentido de la vista, sight. Pero si digo sighting, entonces estamos hablando de un avistamiento, right? Sighting. Okay. 
Uh, then it says aquí, uh, a tomb. Se escribe tomb, pero es tomb, tombstone, right? Uh, tombstone would be como una lápida, ¿verdad? Very good. I'm going to erase my drawings here and let's go and read the last part, okay, of this. Uh, let me see. Okay, one more volunteer for the last part, okay? One more volunteer. Aunque no sé si iban a poder ver, pero si no, también se ve de WhatsApp, ¿ok? Ahí lo pueden ver. Eh, Saúl Arnulfo, please. Ok, I'm going to try. Very good, thank you. Ok, um, give me a moment. Mm -hmm. Ok. Light hand and other hat suggest various explanations for the lies. The lies might have been reflections of life from the town, but Silver Cliff lies seemed to them to have uh, this effect. They could have been caused by radioactive or though there is no evidence of radioactivity, activity, they may also have been caused by gases from rofting matter. This usually happens in some, Swamps. however, some. However, in the area around Silver Cliff is dry or verify the life are from the health meat and that minor wandering in the hills in search of their fortune. 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 Very good. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for helping me with the reading. Okay. Actually, I think you learned a lot of words. Okay. Now, Let's go ahead and take a look at the sentence, ¿verdad? Vamos a tomar ventaja y veamos, miren, look. Estos contextos en donde nosotros pues no sabemos o no estamos 100% seguros, we're not 100% sure, is when we use past models for certainty. ¿Cómo así, Marce? Vaya. Look at this. The lights might have been reflections of lights from the town. But silver clips seem too dim to have this effect. They could have been caused by radioactive ore, right? They may also have been caused by gases from rotting matter, right? Or perhaps the lights from the helmets of of, uh, of dead miners, and then it continues, okay? As you can see, Aquí tenemos las estructuras que acabamos de ver, right, in the reading. Now, I will read it one more time. Lo voy a leer una vez más. Solo ponga atención a la pronunciación. Okay, so let's begin. Today, and look, también una cosa más, chicos. Cuando usted ve una coma, you pause. Hace una pausa. Un punto, you pause. Okay, today, the town of Silver Cliff, Colorado, has a population of only 100 people. Once, however, it was a prosperous mining town where thousands came with dreams of finding silver and making their fortune. Late one night in 1880, a group of miners were headed back to their camp after a good time in town. They were still laughing and joking as they approached the graveyard on a hill outside Silver Cliff. Then one of the men yelled and pointed toward the graveyard. The others fell silent. On top of each grave, they saw a flame like blue lights. These eerie lights seemed to be dancing on the graves, disappearing and then appearing again. This was the first sighting of the blue lights of Silver Cliff. There have been many of other sightings over the years. In 1969, Edward Limeham for National Geographic magazine visited the graveyard. Limeham's article tells of his experience. I saw them. Dim, round spots of blue white light glowed thoroughly among the graves. I stepped forward for a better look. They vanished. I aimed my flashlight at one eerie glow and switched it on. It revealed only a tombstone. 
Limeham and others have suggestions, I mean, suggested various explanations for the lights. The lights might have been reflections of lights from the town, but Silver Cliff's lights seem too dim to have this effect. They could have been caused by radioactive one, or, I'm sorry, though there's no evidence of radioactivity. They might also have been caused by gases from rotting matter. This usually happens in swamps, however, and the area around Silver Cliff is dry. Or perhaps the lights are from the helmets of dead miners wandering the hills in search of their fortune. Do you have questions about the vocabulary words, guys? Si no, pues ahí en Lingui, ¿verdad? Abramos Lingui, ¿ok? Y busquemos las que no sabemos. Tenemos el website, tenemos la aplicación, ¿verdad? Cuéntenme, ¿aprendieron alguna palabra nueva acá? Yo sí. ¿En you? I learned eerie. Do you know the meaning of eerie? Eerie. is over here, Ben. Uh, aquí. aquí está, eerie glow, eerie. Ok, eerie es espeluznante, inquietante, estremecedor, extraño, misterioso, etc. Ok, so what about the other words? ¿Aprendieron alguna otra? Ay, perdón, creo que... I learned sighting. Sighting, ok, very good. Sighting. Uh -huh. Sighting. Yes, I learned tombstone. Tombstone, ok, very good. Excellent. Any other word that you learned today, guys? Sighting, right? Yeah, sighting. Muy bien. It's a, it's a new word. As I was saying, it's como un avistamiento, right? Well, now that we have read the information, let's go ahead and answer the questions, okay? Bueno, pues ya vamos a reportar esto porque si el reading está mal, ¿verdad? Dice, the town, well, today, the town of Silver Cliff has a population of 100 people. Is that a fact or an opinion, guys? What do you think? It's fact. It's a fact, okay? Very good. It's a fact. Fact, guys, fact is a true. Un fact es una verdad. Por ejemplo, sobre mí, a fact, I am 36. Tengo 36 años, I am 36. Eso es un fact, es algo verdadero sobre mí. ¿Qué otra cosa? I have a daughter. I have a daughter, she's 15. ¿Verdad? Entonces, eso es otro fact sobre mí, es una verdad. I am married, es otro fact. Eh, I like cooking, por ejemplo, it's a fact, es una verdad. Ok, bye. Vamos a ver acá. The miners saw flame light blue. Aquí creo que se equivocaron porque es blue light on top of each gray. Fact or opinion? It's fact. It's a fact, right? Very good because they registered that, um, that encounter. Edward Limeham suggested various explanations for the lights. Facts or opinions, guys? What do you think? For me, it's opinion. Exactly, because he suggested, right? So I think this could have been this or this could, might have been that, right? Because he didn't know for sure. No sabía en realidad que, but he offered suggestions. So he provided his opinions. The lights, number four. The lights were actually reflections of lights from the town. Fact or opinion? What do you think? O sea, esta es una de las suggestions que él dio, ¿verdad? Entonces sería un fact or an opinion. In number four is opinion. Opinion, right? Because it's one of the suggestions that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Linehound, right, provided. Okay, there was no evidence of radioactivity. Fact or opinion? Fact. Fact. Very good. Very good. The lights were from the helmets of dead miners. Opinion. Opinion. Opinion, ¿verdad? Y pues es la más fantasiosa porque dice que pues son de las lámparas de los cascos de los mineros buscando sus 
su fortuna, but I mean that could could couldn't uh couldn't have been proven, right? So let's go ahead and send it. Vamos a ver. And look, ay, aquí me equivoqué. Sorry. Okay, Edward Lime has suggested various explanations for the lights, because actually, um, sí, aquí tendría que haber sido esta. Y ahí, hoy sí le va a quedar aquí, ¿eh? Ahí les queda, ¿verdad? Las respuestas. Chicos, está empezando a llover. Denme un momento, solo voy a cerrar la ventana. Give me one moment, ¿ok? I am back. Thank you. Okay, so uh, besides this exercise, aparte de eso, chicos, ¿han tenido alguna otra dificultad en la plataforma? Yeah. Okay, very good. Let me yes, go. Teacher. See? Who? Uh, number three, three, seven. Three point seven. Okay, very good. Three, seven, and eight. A, en la A, perdón, A, number oh. one, A. Pero one, A, 1.8. La primera, ahí, la A, la que está ahí ahorita, ahí. Ah, dice? perdón, yo le ¿Sí? entendí mal, me dijo one, A, pensé que me decía 1.8, 1.8. Entonces, over oh. here, in number, ahí, tenemos la, one, A, A and B. Sí. Vaya, espérame, one, tenemos... A. Ah, uh, one A, acá. I invited sí. my boyfriend over that yes. one. Yes. Perfect. And this is 3.718. Deme un momentito. Okay, man. Ahí está. Bye. Perfect. Okay, so 1.8, it says, I invited my boyfriend over to meet my parents, but he arrived wearing torn jeans. He looked so messy. Well... He, ¿cómo puedo decir? Pudo haberse vestido. How can I, can I say that using one of these? Vamos a usar una de estas. ¿Cuál necesitamos? ¿La primera, la segunda o la tercera? Esa es the first oh, one. Second one. Or third one. Pudo haberse vestido. Mm -hmm. yes, Entonces, Acordémonos la pronunciación, ¿verdad? Could. Esa L cool. no está. Uh -huh. Esa L no está. Es cool. 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 Muy bien. Cool. Entonces, vamos a usar good. I invited my boyfriend cool. over to meet my parents, but he arrived wearing torn jeans. He looked so messy. Well, he could have dressed. Dressed. Uh -huh. Entonces, decimos que es good, must have, más pasado participio. ¿Verdad? Y esa es la respuesta. Okay, teacher, dressed. Sí, sí, sí. Yo tengo un correcto yo, dress había puesto. Uh -huh. Entonces todos los verbos están en, pres en sí. su forma base. Hay que pasarlos a pasado participio si es la estructura que necesitamos. Sí. Correcto. Sí, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? ¿Alguien más? I'm not sure, but I have problem in, in this, in this uh, deception. Point seven, but in the I I think uh, eight more uh, más abajo. I don't remember. Um, I think um, you you start yelling, maybe uh, in the. This one. Aha, uh -huh, this one. Ah, um, okay, okay. Very good. Uh, yawning, yawning, yawning. Yawning. Postesar, ¿verdad? Y dice, um, you, and then blank space, yawning. Maybe she would have gotten the hint, ¿verdad? Deb eh, debiste haber comenzado a postesar. How do you say that? 
debiste haber comenzado a procesar y probablemente ella hubiera entendido la, la, la indirecta. She would have gotten the hint, la indirecta, the hint, right? Entonces, ¿cómo digo yo? Debiste haber comenzado a bostezar. I should. Muy bien. Should okay, you have. should have. Very good. ¿Y luego? Comenzado a bostezar. Started. started. Very started. good. Ok, hasta ahí, ¿verdad? You could have started. Y fíjense que en la respuesta incluye el Johnny, fíjense. Um, uh -huh. For this is I. You got the correct mistake. No mistake, mistake, mistake. Uh, I, I try. Yes, I try. True. Yes. Sorry, I guys. Tried. Pero fíjense que estoy viendo que es la única que que de las respuestas porque yo puedo ver las respuestas, pero es la única que no llega hasta el pasado participio, sino que incluye esta palabra, Jonen. Debiste haber, porque la respuesta sería hasta ahí, ¿verdad? You should have started, Jonen, yeah. pero no, esta es la única que incluye el verbo. You could, you should, I'm sorry, you should, no, perdón, should, should, the, the should comienza. Should have started yawning. Entonces, eso es lo que tienen que incluir para que se la tome como correcta. Muy bien, ahí muy buena observación, este Rufino. Pero aquí les paso, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes vean. Should have started yawning. De ahí las, las demás van con sus, con sus elementos como corresponde, ¿verdad? Que es el, el verbo modal, have, pasado participio de las estructuras que revisamos. ¿De acuerdo? ¿Alguna otra pregunta, chicos, con respecto a la plataforma? Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question about it? No? Bye, chicos. Entonces, si no hay más preguntas, let's go back here to the manual. Okay? Entonces, this is the, I think this is the last article, right? Um, here is the, um, the exercise that you just completed. Okay? And and that's it, right? Then it, it moves to a different, you know, um, to a different exercise, okay? Uh, but I'm coming back here to this part, porque aquí es donde, pues, nos hemos, estamos ahorita, ¿verdad? The past models for degrees of certainty. Okay, and let's do this exercise. I think we still have time to work with this one. It says, read each situation and choose the best explanation. Then practice with a partner. Pay attention to the reduced forms in the past models, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at this one, okay? If you don't have the manual handy, don't worry. I'll share this with you over here in the manual, okay? I mean, in WhatsApp. Let me see. There we go. Ahí está. Okay, so it says, Jane is in a terrible mood today, right? Brian got a call and looked worried. The teacher looks very happy today. Mora couldn't keep her eyes open. She was sleepy, right? Jeff was fired from his job and my cousin is short of money again, again, right? Explanations, he may have gotten a raise, she must have not gotten enough sleep. He might not have done his work on time. She could have had a fly with her boyfriend. She must have spent too much last month and he couldn't have heard good news, okay? So let's go ahead and answer, you know, this, we're going to match the, the number with the letter, okay? So please take three minutes, tómese unos minutitos, unos dos, tres minutos para completarlo y luego lo vamos a lo vamos a, a revisar, ¿ok? Juntos.
Let me know when you're ready, okay? Are you ready, guys? Bye. Let's see. Let's go ahead and check if we can uh, do it together, okay? Uh, what about number one? It says, Jane is in a terrible mood today. Pobrecita, that's a super moody. So what do you think is the explanation why Jane is in a terrible mood? A, B, C, D, E, or F? What do you think? B, teacher. Veamos. She must not have gotten enough sleep. D. Por ahí dicen D, she could have had a fight with her boyfriend. Possibly, right? Probably she could have had a fight with her boyfriend. Aunque okay, también hay personas que si no duermen bien, ¿verdad? También tienden a estar así moody. Moody es como un ánimo y un, como se dice, temperamento cambiante. Brian got a call. Mal humor. Worried. Ajá, mal humor, cabal. Number two, Brian got a call and looked worried. What do you think it's the explanation, guys? I think it's little F. Yeah, I think so, right? Yeah. He couldn't have heard good news, right? He couldn't have heard good news. What about this one, guys? The teacher looks very happy today. A. A, he may have gotten a, a. a race. Okay, well, yeah, probably, right? This teacher got a race, good. Generally, it doesn't happen, but it could be. Mara couldn't keep her eyes open. Pobrecita estaba luchando por no quedarse dormida. So what do you think it's the explanation? Letter B. B, e, right? So she must not have gotten an, enough sleep, right? What about this one, guys? Jeff was fired from his job. What do you think it's the reason why he got fired? B. B. Did you say E or C? I'm sorry. Letter C. 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 Ah, okay, letter C. C. Okay, thank you, guys. He might not have done his work on time. Yeah, actually, that could be true, right? Probably that's what happened. And let's go ahead and go with the last one, okay? My cousin is short of money again, so... Letter E. Letter E, right? She must have spent too much last month, okay? So as you could see... Este es otro contexto, chicos, en el que nosotros pues podemos eh, usar, ¿verdad? El, el, la parte de, de esta models, ¿verdad? Entonces, eh, cuando nosotros estamos hablando de algo y queremos dar una posible explicación, a possible explanation, right? So, we can use them. Podemos usarla, ¿verdad? Y como ustedes pueden ver, acá, ¿verdad? Son for degrees of certainty. O sea, me ayudan a dar, pues, una, una explicación de acuerdo al nivel de certeza que yo pueda tener, ¿verdad? Entonces, I'm going to stop here. Me voy a detener acá, pero solo voy a mencionar los nombres de las personas que no contestaron. Carlos Roberto Domínguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Cristina Abigail Quintanilla Amado. No vino, Cristina. What about María Griselda de La Paz Zamora? Eh, Miguel Arsenio Alas Crespi. Miguel Arsenio Romino. Y what about Wendy Carolina Calderón de Aparicio? Tampoco. Bueno, solo faltaron cuatro hoy, chicos. Muy bien. Eh, guys, I'm going to stop here, but thank you very much for making the time, right, to uh, join today. Así que hoy sí. Enjoy your vacations, ¿verdad? And I'll see you next Monday. Nos vemos el otro lunes. Cuídense mucho. Tengan Great cuidado. Teacher. Okay. See you on oh, Monday. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. See you soon. Have a nice bye. week. Thank you. Likewise. Bye-bye, guys.